Hello fellow wanderers, this is Endry, and thank you for once again joining me as we wander on through a little bit of EQ Titan, the new player tutorial. In today's video, we're going to cover the sort of pre-planning stages and a little bit about hardware requirements for functioning in a reasonable rate inside of EQ Titan. Now, a bit of a disclaimer, if you just want to make a single group and run around and play, then by all means, uh, completely viable. And this is going to be a little bit more about end game setup, uh, because I believe that if you use all the characters you intend to use from the start, you can leverage that in your leveling to be a little bit more efficient. But if you are looking to make a single group, then real quick over here, uh, my group one set up here, a warrior, cleric, wizard, bard, shaman, and berserker. Um, I'd go with that, except maybe swap in the rogue or the monk instead of the berserker, uh, just for the utility. Especially if you're only going to be a single group, I might instead pick the rogue. Uh, that way you've got someone who can pick locks to get you into some of the more remote locations in Sir Hazra Temple or perhaps in uh, Sebelus. Now, beyond that, I've got two major philosophies here. If you're looking for a sort of small raid setup, I would look at maybe 18 characters, especially if you've got a midline gaming system. Nothing particularly modern like what I'm running. I've got a seven-year-old processor in my system, and it kind of shows. 18 is about all I can get. So for 18 characters, what do I recommend? Well, first of all, warrior. Your main tank is going to be a warrior. If you want to do any small-end raid content, you're going to have to have a warrior tank. It's just the nature of the game. I recommend that every group that you make have a cleric. Three clerics will let you get down to about, I believe it's a three second to complete heal rotation, which will be required for uh, low end to mid tier planes of power rating and definitely for end tier Luckland rating uh, through Vexthal, uh, especially for the final couple of bosses in Vexthal where they just hit so hard and so fast that you'll go oom before you run out of uh, hit points on the mob. For every group, I have a teleporter. Now, at this point, you can choose to use a teleporter or not for every group. At the very least, you definitely want a wizard. Uh, that way you can do translocate or teleport to get people back to base if you're deep in a dungeon. And of course, you're definitely going to want a druid for buffs, if nothing else. Still, for ease of movement and quality of life, and especially for use of evac eat in case of an emergency to prevent a complete wipe, I'd probably recommend a wizard or druid in every group. Bards, get three of them. If you're doing three groups, get four between four, and this continues ad infinium. The resists, the haste song, the over haste song, the mono regen song, which technically you only need one bard to have. I'd probably recommend two of them run that one. Get into that a bit later. Uh, bards are invaluable. They don't do a lot of DPS, but what they do to keep your other characters alive on a group by group basis is basically invaluable. I recommend every group have a bard. And then we get down to the kind of the nitty gritty. So first of all, up here, you see Paladin. Paladin is my choice for Rampage tank. And let me clarify, if your main tank dies, the Paladin is not going to carry you through to the finish line unless that boss mob is really low on hit points. The Paladin is there as a Rampage tank. They can mitigate the occasional Rampage damage for a single target Rampage mob fairly well. In addition, they do bring Brels to the table, which is just a flat, big hit point buff, which I think is a little bit better for your non-melee and your non-tanks than the ranger buff equivalent. So I do recommend a, pal a paladin. You could put a Shadow Knight in there. Their debuff plus buffs are pretty handy, and uh, they definitely make the mobs hit a little less hard. And, uh, you know, you could also go with another warrior. Um, it doesn't really matter. You could even put a monk in there for a rampage tank if you really wanted to. I just like the buffs that a paladin brings to the table, so that's my justification there. For the other classes representative, you need at least one shaman. Shaman buffs, especially for the hit points, are invaluable at the high end. Uh, you'll definitely want a monk. Uh, monks are insanely good damage. Uh, them and berserkers are basically toe and toe until the very end very, very end of Gates of Discord. And Fane Death is always handy, as well as the Zephyr line. Ranger. Uh, range damage is very nice when you get to later end pop. Planes of Power as it is. 
and they have a very nice set of buffs which boost attack and hit points for your melee uh, and boost your AC for your warrior by a great deal. So I think rangers are invaluable in any raid setup. At least one. Berserkers, they do a lot of damage. Uh, they do a lot of damage. They're melee based, so they don't ever run out of steam. And at the very, very end game, uh, I've heard it said that they're better than monks. For the mid game, mid game I'll say is early raiding game, uh, monks actually do seem to pull ahead of berserkers in damage. But when you get enough alternate advancements, berserkers catch up and, and can pass them. Though monks do have a little better aggro control, uh, you don't have to summon axes constantly to make the berserkers have their uh, debuff that monks can just fade off. Rogues are great. Utility-wise, they do a lot. They're not as good a DPS because uh, this server, like most of the emulation servers, does bias towards two-handed DPS weapons. So in that case, rogues kind of fall behind in DPS. By all means, they're not terrible. And they never get aggro. You set up the evade script, and they just don't ever get aggro. Uh, over here, final slot, Zerker or Monk, take your pick, or any other class you really want to put in there. Uh, I don't actually recommend an Enchanter or a Beast Lord. Beast Lord buffs aren't particularly useful compared to Ranger or Paladin, and their mono regen, because of the way Bard mono regen works on the server, is small enough to be not worth considering. And while they do do good pet damage, I think a Magician for a pet class is more useful. But if you want to put a Beast Lord in your group, this would be the place to do it. They're not terrible DPS. Their pets do do good deep DPS, and they themselves do decent melee DPS. And uh, the procs and the cast DPS is also fairly decent. So if you want to put a Beast Lord in, this is where I'd put it. I definitely suggest a Magician, mostly because I live by summoned arrows uh, for my warrior for pulling. But also, their pet damage is quite high. Their nukes do a good amount of damage. And Call of the Hero, when it can be used, is fairly useful. Especially if, I don't know, one of your characters falls in a pit of lava and you'd like to get them back. So, 18 characters. This is actually very similar to the group that I run for myself. Except I do actually run an enchanter. Uh, enchanters for the magic resist buff, situationally useful. Though magic resist is actually really easy to get fairly high uh, between Bard Song and the magic resist bias that appears on a lot of gear. Other than that, uh, mono regen from an enchanter is marginal compared to Bards. Uh, and their haste, I actually prefer not to use enchanter haste. I find that since Bard haste uses a Bard Song buff slot versus an enchanter's, well, normal buff slot, of which you're limited to 15 before you get AA, I just think that there are better uses for the buff slots than an Enchanter offers. Uh, so I run one because I run one. Um, but as far as efficiency goes, I don't really recommend one. Maybe if you were to do a fifth group, I'd slide one in there somewhere uh, because they are handy, if not essential, on this server at least. Now, if this was on live, I would... Definitely have an enchanter because mono regen for Bard Song does not work any way the same on live as it does on here, or at least last I checked it didn't. So, over here in the corner, you'll see we've got a little bit about quad core, RAM, CPU, video card. So, here's what I would tell you CPU, this determines your FPS never quest. I know, strange. You'd think, oh, the video card, that's usually what bottlenecks FPS. But remember, EverQuest is an old game and even its most modern engine is still quite old. In this case, if you're actually talking what the game uses to render, it has a heavy bias towards CPU rendering. The CPU is going to be your limiter for FPS. In this case, I am running an old i7-950 compared to even the last two generations of i7s. Uh, it is a woefully underperforming processor, and I can still run 18 at about 30 frames a second on my main screen. Some of you might find this unacceptable. Some of you might find it more than acceptable. But for me, I find that any i7 equivalent, even from the first generation, which is what my processor is, is capable of handling running 18 clients. Uh, RAM, I recommend 18 gigs. I basically recommend one gig of RAM per client you're loading. 
Do your clients use that much? No, especially if you decide to run two separate clients for your characters you'll look at and the characters you won't. But I like overhead. It reduces the chance of getting a blue screen error, and it gives your system a little more RAM to play with for background processes. So, yet again, my rule of thumb is one gig per tune. And this stays true until you're starting to run 30 or 40 or 50 characters, in which case you're definitely going to be optimizing your clients and you can get away with a little bit lower RAM. Still, RAM determines number of characters you can load. Number of tunes. All hidden. Darn. Anyway, video card. What does your video card do in EverQuest? It lets you see pretty things. This is for dynamic shadows. This is for uh, particle effects, things like that. Things that are very pretty, but are not scene by scene rendering based. I'm putting a GTX 750 or equivalent up up here. Honestly, you can probably get away with a lot less because I'm, full disclosure, I'm running a GTX 970. It's the most modern thing in my computer. And I use 50% at full load of the games doing, Full combat load here, uh, and I'm running 50% RAM usage, so about 2 gigs of video RAM. If you've got 2 gigs of video RAM and you've got a decent card, you can run 18. And to be honest, while I recommend a slightly nicer card for running 24, it's probably not even necessary. So speaking of 24, 24 characters is what I actually recommend for partnered rating all the way through the end of the game. And you're going to see that it's very similar. These first three groups, I didn't even change them. That's what I recommend. Uh, if you really wanted to throw in an enchanter, you could do it with four groups. I still don't think it's necessary. But you'll see here, I still keep to my bard for every group. You're going to have to have that. Here's the part that's interesting. I don't recommend only a single cleric for group four. I recommend two clerics in your fourth group that will get you a five cleric complete heal chain, which is a two second delay, which is enough to survive everything but the most unlucky situations in a Gates of Discord, everything but the end zone area. And if you're in that point, you're probably well beyond the point where you're looking at these suggestions anyway. And you can very easily get a character from one to 65 over the span of a weekend. Trust me. It's completely possible. But starting out, if you want a strong partner raid group to get you through high-end pop, low-end gates of discord, this is what I'm recommending you start out with. So you got two clerics in this group to get your full complete heal chain. Yet again, I always recommend a porter, but if you want more DPS, and druids can actually be good DPS if you're not using them for off heals, uh, you might want to try swapping in a melee DPS, zerker, monk, even a ranger, perhaps. We'll get into why rangers in a minute. All your bards. I throw in another shaman here because buffing, buffing takes forever, especially before you get mass group buff. Even with mass group buff, this way your second shaman can toss out, you know, mass group buff stamina or mass group buff for agility. Also, it means that you can run avatar on every single melee character you have without having to worry about it. Um, and if you rearrange these groups and inside a raid, I don't actually recommend you keep these particular formats. Uh, you can basically run Spirit of the Jaguar, which we'll get into a little bit later, on all of your melee. In this last slot, I've got Z slash M slash R, Zerker, Monk, Ranger. Also, you could put Rogue here, but I think a Ranger is actually more useful than a Rogue at this point. Why a Ranger, you might be asking? Ranged DPS. And this is actually why, if you were to ask me, I really prefer having Berserkers over Monks. Ranged DPS, especially at endgame pop, is really useful to have. A Ranger with a good bow and a good set of arrows can outrange Rampage, AE Rampage. They're about the only thing in the game that can. Even casters, uh, even with extended range 4, uh, really can't outrange a rampage, and it can become a bit of a problem. Uh, your melee are just going to die. Your druids and shaman, whom you might be running for your backup healers, are just going to go oom um while your tank is alive. 
why some people prefer a caster focus over a melee focus. Most people will swear by melee, especially outside of the few AE Rampage fights that you see inside of Endgame Pop and NK, Endgame GOD. So this is kind of the groups I form, why I form them. If you're worried that this group is really DPS light, Zerker or Monk is going to bring their DPS up. And for XP groups, just give these guys their proc hammers. They will do not the best DPS, but a lot more than you would expect. Drews, of course, nuke. And casters with their nukes can almost always steal DPS if you're set up that way. Or steal XP, I should say. So don't worry too much about that. As for CPU, RAM, video card, uh, my father, who I recently got into the game, uh, can run 24 characters without any modifications at all to the clients uh, with an i7-4790K. So if you can find one of those, something newer, something AMD equivalent, uh, by all means, that should work for 24 tunes. RAM, 24 gigs, like I said, until you get up into the 30 to 40 to 50 tunes, I recommend a gig of RAM per tune. Tune, by the way, if I haven't said it already, in this case means characters. And for the video card, I recommend a GTX 770 or similar AMD equivalent or higher. Your graphics cards don't do a lot of work. They do a little bit of offloading for your CPU, but the game's not optimized for it. I would say if you're going to spend money anywhere, a better CPU is more important than a better graphics card. And for more characters, more RAM. Now, you can run more tunes than this. But there's a reason I recommend 24 for partners. With 24 tunes, you and a partner, also running 24 tunes, are at 48. In Gates of Discord, the cap for a raid is 54 characters. What this does is it lets you bring in an extra group, either because another person just needs six tunes run through, or because you have a secondary group that, for some reason, you need flag that's not in your main raid group. But it gives you some flexibility, basically, between you and your partner running through the content. If you run more tunes, like, say, 30, one of you can do that. The other one really can't. You can't both run 30. But it's not particularly necessary. Even Gates of Discord, which is very tightly tuned, really shouldn't require you to run more than 24 tunes each. Can you, if you want? Sure. And if you're going solo through content, well, then we're talking 36 or 42 tunes, minimum. In which case, I'd actually be recommending dual system setups connected through EQBCS, which we'll get into in actually just a few videos here. But basically, this is what I recommend for two people coming into the game who want to play together with tunes. I recommend you make them all up front so you can leverage the strength of having all these characters up front. And in the future, we'll get into kind of how you control which group gets XP. Not perfect, it works pretty well. Like I said, if you don't want a porter in every group, you know, drop a couple druids, put some DPS in there. Uh, if you have a preference towards beast lords or other DPS, by all means, use those. If you don't think you need a bard in every group, then don't put a bard in every group. But essentially, play what you think is going to work. Play what you enjoy. This is what I enjoy. If you like Shadow Knights over Paladins, put a Shadow Knight as your secondary tank. If you don't like knights at all, put a warrior. But basically, this is what I think will work as a starting person on the server. I don't think you'll fall into any major pitfalls here. And for especially for early content like Temple of Vishan and Strahazra Temple that have a lot of AoE effects that are resisted through your bard resists, having all those bards is quite handy. Having all those teleporters means you don't have to reshuffle your groups or use the guild lobby or guild hall every time you want to go somewhere. So that's my rationale. And if it works for you, and I think it will work very well for most new players, uh, run with it. See what you can do with it. If you want to tweak it a little, by all means, there's really only a few things you desperately need to have. Cleric healers, the warrior tank, a wizard for convenience, and at least two bards. More than one. At least two. Preferably three. You might get away without the fourth. And other than that, see what works for you. In the next video, I'm going to be going over creating the actual accounts for all of these characters we just planned out here. Uh, so it's going to be mostly looking at the websites, 
And uh, there's not actually going to be any logging into characters quite yet. But it is important. And it's actually going to be done before we even cover setting up your client to be useful. But until then, stay safe, have fun, and I'll see you then.